Bam, live. Bam, we're live. Oh, my goodness. A word of advice. A free word of advice. I know usually I'm very conservative and I keep to myself. But on your fasting day, don't drink 10 cups of coffee. You know what I saw this weekend at the uh, – just there's all these, like, brands and stuff around here. There was this um, – this bottle of something that was, it was basically just spray sodium. Uh huh. I know a lot, a lot of times when people fast, they like, you know, do a little shake of salt or whatever in their water. Cause that's often yeah. something that you don't want to be deficient of, especially if the fast is going to be longer. So I never seen that before. Have you ever seen that a spray sodium? No, but, but, <laughs> but I like that business. Just water and salt in the bottle and sell it. It looks like an ax bottle. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, you saw it too. Yeah, they gave me some. B O A maybe was the company. Oh, is it pressurized? So it's like aerosol. Yeah, it's like a list. I think so. Like, do do you try it, Caleb? I did. It's it was like a berry salt taste. Like it literally just tasted like salt with like a little bit of berry. I don't think you should <clears throat> aerosol stuff into your mouth. I have no. There's no science behind that. It's not like I just. I just don't think so. What, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's weird. It's a weird concept. Do you know oh, this that stuff? That's good. Yes, that stuff hey. is so good. Had a nice, a nice conversation with Jeff uh, in Vendor Village the other day too, and he gave me this bottle to try. If I was wealthier, I would uh, do that like on the reg, like four times a day. That stuff's good. <clears throat> you haven't tried it yet, Brian? <clears throat> I, I I took a couple yesterday, but that was the first day. It tastes good, huh? That cayenne pepper like sting a little bit. I didn't. Oh. I, my, the taste wasn't a mem- memorable one way or the other for me. I put it under my tongue and just hold it in there. Mm-hmm. So savor every last drop. Where's Ricky? Where? Oh wow. Sarah's flow. Where's Ricky? Where's R- Ricky? Um, had a meeting, and he is running a few minutes late. So yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before and the day before, we covered an event called Wadapalooza in Miami. And on Sunday was my fasting day. And so to stay on my fasting day, I normally used to have like one or two cups of coffee. And yesterday, I seriously probably had like 10. And my stomach is unsettled. I'm not going to lie to you. My stomach is unsettled. And and co and stomach is not like the um, exact word I'm looking for. It's uh, what's below your stomach? Where's stuff go after your stomach? Your bowels, like your intestines. Yeah, that spot. That spot's acting weird. Lots um, of caffeine will leave that to you. Here's a link that I. This is supposed to. I'm gonna dig into my notes for my live call-in shows while we wait for. Uh, Ricky, I don't know why this is on here. Oh. Your live call-in shows. Oh, no. I know. I'll try to keep it cool. Here, this one's good. You'll like this one, Brian. <laughs> Please I'll, disregard I'll uh, me in, in these next 10 minutes. <laughs> yes. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. Um, this is uh, James Sprague's dad. Patrick. Yeah, I don't know how. I, so is this this weekend? Yeah, yeah, he was competing. He wasn't first for a majority of the weekend. I want. I just want to say I don't know for sure if the non-elite divisions swimming workout have been completely finalized in every division. Um, we, obviously, there were some complications with that, and uh, I know as of last night they were not. And even the morning chalk up had written written an article in which they had said that Olivia Kerstetter had come second in her division. And now, as of this morning, she's listed as first in her division. So if you're trying to track any of the uh, non-elite divisions, just uh, be aware that they, there still could be some room for change in some of those throughout the day today, I believe. Uh, I, I don't have a uh, – Jessica, you, you better watch your mouth. I don't have a peptic ulcer or whatever the fuck you're talking about. Don't, how dare you? Go to your room. Peptic ulcer. Your mom has a peptic ulcer. No, I didn't. I didn't break my fast. Hey, did you meet this dude, Brian? No, I didn't realize he was here. I well, I, I kind of put it together last night 
with uh, either a comment or something you had, you had said, but I didn't, I would have uh, loved to meet him unless I did meet him and, he, and he's, you know, got an alias or something. Dude, someone needs to cast that dude in a movie. <laughs> he is so cool looking. Did, did he get my joke? Uh, yes. Yeah, I did. Sorry. I okay. should have laughed a little. I'm, I mean, I'm not myself. Something's like, I have a peptic ulcer. I don't have a peptic <laughs> ulcer. Do you know what that is, Caleb? You're a doctor, aren't you? Yeah, for sure. Um, no, not really. It's just like when your stomach has a lot of acid in it and then it just like irritates the lining of your stomach <clears throat> and then it can just kind of like cause you to want to vomit or like shit yourself basically. I yeah, that it's I I'm pe this is not cool. This is not cool. I, I'm peeing out of my butt, but it's like oil. It's like it's like if if I just if I did it on a pan, I could make eggs on it. It's just oil coming out. I don't know how there's oil coming out from coffee. Okay. Um, so look by the way, when you watch James Sprague's dad work out, this is what I look like when I work out. But with lighter weights, but it's just like everything looks just like a little too heavy, no matter how much is he's lifting. Look at <coughs> that's what happens to old guys. Like the pop is gone. It's all it's all just muscling it. You see that? It's just all reverse curls and stuff. Man. How did he do, Brian? Um, I don't know. I, he I think he was in first most of the weekend. It's, I think, the 50 to 54 division. Let's see what it says right here. When I was talking, when I was oh, talking, no, he was one, I, and you were shaking your head, were you disappointed in what I was saying? Or like you shaking your head at your screen or? I don't know. I'm writing an article. Um, he was he finished second in his division. <laughs> what? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, eighty percent of my attention is on my bowels. Uh, I think that the spot below my stomach, according to um, Caleb, and uh, ninety-two percent of uh, Brian's attention is on the paper he's writing. So um, Caleb's here. I think Caleb Caleb's seventy-two percent here. So between the three of us, I didn't prep for Ricky at all. Okay, I'll show you guys another. Well, he's so, you know, he's he's a man of many words, so you won't have to fill very many gaps in conversation, probably. I'm going to make so many long, <laughs> uncomfortable silences on this. Um, um, let me see. This is, I'm, I'm trying to avoid all the, any vaccine stuff. because. Oh, yeah, this is a great video. You ready for this one? Look at this one. This is awesome. Uh, here we go. These are notes from your live call-in shows? Like, these are topics I was going to talk about on my live call-in shows. This is why it's important for first responders to do um, CrossFit, by the way. Look. <clears throat> I think that's the guy. I think that's the guy who is uh, – movement is everything tactical, practical, and medical. That's why Caleb does CrossFit. Did you see that uh, – did you see that truck compiling in? Hold on. Let me see if I can refresh that. Okay, here we go. Look at this thing. And the guy in the in the neon, that's the guy who's in the subsequent video. I hope so. That's what I'm telling myself just for fun, like so that like I can enjoy the video more. I mean, oh, holy dude. cow! I mean, he must. It's too bad we couldn't see the left side there. He must have rolled because that thing was fish tailing way to the left too. <laughs> Yeah, it gets pretty treacherous when I mean, even if it's like like when in Virginia that was and they had people like semi trucks, like they just couldn't see anything ahead of them and they were basically doing this. So when you have like a mass casualty like this, it becomes a bit of a problem. And if you're not prepared for it, it can be even worse. Hey, that looks like some like it doesn't even look like um yeah, strong coffee is good. It's really good. It's like a treat, and there's no jitters with it. I don't know how they do that. I wish I had some right now, actually. I don't the know amount I... of strong coffee I had this weekend was unwieldy. <laughs> That's usually what I'm drinking, by the way. You know that like blue cup that I drink in, on the show sometimes? That's strong coffee. Well, do you get the do you have the black one where you just put one little scoop, or do you have the, the... – I have the morning fix. And I like it. I think the way, same way you do. I, I, I drink it with a glass of whole milk. You probably you know use raw milk or something. 
I showed the owner that I do that, and he's like, oh, I've never seen that. I was like, oh, that's weird. You did it on your Instagram, and I was like, I also do it that way, and I had been doing it that way before I saw you post it one time, and I just assumed, like, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Well, okay, Maybe it's just the cool kids, though. Okay, here, I, I can't help it. Sorry, we'll do one. We'll do one COVID post. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who um, go to church and you're concerned about getting um, sick from the priest uh, or getting the priest sick, this priest has covered himself in 3,000 <laughs> plastic bags. Oh, no, that's Rich Forney. He's just getting ready to jerk 315 three times. <laughs> that he puts on that plastic suit first. <laughs> Remember when he had all the – did you see when he had like seven belts on? Yes, that, that was awesome. It took me a while yeah, to is, get that. This is the equivalent here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> a little over over the top, probably. I I watch this video and I and I laugh at the priest for all those plastic bags, and then I just switch to that girl's butt, and then the the next twelve times I pretend like I'm watching the video, I just stare at that butt. I mean, that butt is crazy. You know, I I hadn't actually noticed it until you said it, and now that you said it, I can't see anything else. Yeah, it's it's an incredible. I like it. See how. Uh, on the bottom of her butt cheek, how the um, the the denim is like crinkling. I like that look for some reason. It's cool. It's better than just like the smooth look. Anyway, we live in a weird world. That should be titled "Lack of Faith." Lack of. <laughs> no, no. I I don't want to get all mushy right now, but I could. I, I should just do a whole thing on what success looks like, even though like I have no business talking about that. But Will Brandstetter, if you want to know what success is, watch what he's doing. This is the problem. Like you can meet a thousand people and you won't come across someone like him. And when you do, you won't even know it. But he's basically a guy like if you left him alone in a field, he would build a house, plant a garden and um, and, 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 and make a self-sustaining uh, ecosystem. The guy cannot stop creating and working. And he's just some kid we met on Instagram, and he's just taking the podcast and just running ahead with it. He's mm -hmm. just like, and I'm just like, yeah, cool. It reminds me of the early days of CrossFit, actually. We were all, it was just growing so fast, and there was so much room for creativity. Greg and Lauren just let us just go buck wild. A uh, priest in a full body suit. But I don't write any of that stuff. I mean, I, I, I read through them, and I'm like, hey, that, I guess that, that sounds like uh, how I feel. Oh, you know what's crazy is how how trippy people are. Um, he post he wrote something about Jason Hopper, and then Jason Hopper reposted it and said, "Don't think for a second that um, uh, was that a naked guy behind you, Caleb." Uh, don't think for a second that I that I um, uh, don't think for a second that uh, Sevon wrote that or something. And people are like, "Are you and Jason fighting?" Like, no. no. <laughs> without jason my show's nothing i don't fight with anyone i love everyone peace and love i love craig ritchie you should come on the show he's a good dude just kidding uh i am not the rogan of crossfit did I, tell you, I did tell you i had a what was that i think your youtube's open it is not we're streaming live on pornhub too is your pornhub open Oh, that's it. Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. My grinder date must have left that open. <laughs> Did you hang up on me earlier because I made that joke? Yeah, it wasn't. I didn't. I don't mind if you make those jokes about me, but I have a lot of respect for that guy. Oh, and he could hear. And I didn't appreciate it. He's not here. Oh, 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 oh! Wow. So you didn't mind that I was making fun of you? You minded that I was making fun of him? Yeah, and I thought we were going to delay 15 minutes, so I was going to try to finish that article. Maybe take a deuce. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Savan. Is it weird that you're such a handsome man, but we can't see you? <laughs> the world's missing out. Yeah, what is going on? You're, 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 you, you look like a you – like like can you turn the lights on in the room? Yeah, the lights are on. <laughs> Give me one second. Oh, all right. That's You're what I said to my wife. <laughs> oh, not a minute. 
What happened then? Oh, there we go. Okay, I have a list of 642 questions. Where were you on the night of December 2nd, 2017? <laughs> and what did you have in your hand? What did you eat that night? Vegemite. <laughs> he is prepared. <laughs> I swear if someone says some dumb shit in the comments, I will ban you for life. I'm not even fucking kidding. No one has to come on this show and uh, – and, 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 and Ricky's coming on the show and it's like he's in our living room and I treat people in my living room all the same way. You say something fucking stupid and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Ricky, I don't I, I, I wanted to try to say hi to you this weekend. I saw you a few times, but we were kind of moving in opposite directions. But I'm Brian. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Brian. I did see you out there analyzing the, the floor, but I, I didn't get a chance to to say good day. And and this is Caleb. He's behind the scenes, and now he's under the table. Now he just took off his pink pink underwear. Um, and like if I say something like, Ricky, that was a great lift you did in 2015, then Caleb starts searching the internet to put it up. <laughs> or he pops That's on and goes, no, Sevon, that was 2017, and he corrects me. Awesome. Hey, so you went to Dubai. Then you came home. Well, you came to the semi-great country of the United States. <laughs> uh, where you, And you went to Vegas where you train, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so... You, uh... From Dubai, I went to LA because that was the direct flight. It's like 16 hours straight to LA. And then I drove from LA to Vegas and camped out there for, for three weeks. Is, are there direct flights? Did you take a direct flight from Australia to Dubai as well? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. 14 hours. So just to kind of put in perspective of <laughs> how yeah. far you traveled to get here. Yeah. Very long way. And did you roll with your lady? Did your lady go to Dubai? Yeah, she came with me. Yeah, yeah. And you guys sat next to each other in the plane. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and some yeah, well, other, that... some other guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm guessing his name wasn't Benny. Nah, no, Benny. Did, did did his shoulders encroach onto your seat? Nah, she, she was in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you're a good dude you didn't take the middle seat you weren't like honey go ahead nah you don't have to sit next to this filthy american uh how was la did you get to see him did you get to see la at all nah we spent a night at venice beach oh man it was horrible it really is horrible right yeah i couldn't believe it hey had you been there before yeah i went there in summer in 2017 that was like where we went after the games and had a bit of a holiday and it was, it was nice in summer, but it was not a nice place. Yeah. Anyway. Tell me what you saw. So for those of you who don't know, Venice, be Los Angeles, California, the United States, earth, planet earth is falling apart as we know it. <laughs> yeah. And what happened is, is a couple of years ago, um, the, these, there's became this movement to just hate police officers. It's completely insane. It's completely insane. It's completely insane. And there became this movement to hate police officers. And so police officers are just chilling now. I mean, not chilling's a little extreme, but they're, they're just not engaging criminals. Like, why would they? <laughs> they don't want to get in trouble. And so they've stopped engaging criminals, and crime is just on the rise everywhere. It's nuts. And so one of the places that's fallen apart is Los Angeles. And Venice Beach, one of the most ex some of the most expensive real estate in the United States of America and the world, has now gone to shit. I can't believe you got to see it firsthand. Yeah, it was it was just homeless people everywhere. Okay, so let me let me say one thing here. That's a total mischaracterization. Those aren't homeless people. Those are drug addicts. Yeah. The, 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 you cool. have to understand that people. Oh, mm. I want to help the homeless people. The other day, I saw a video of a guy, and it's like man covers homeless man with jacket, and homeless man gets up and beats up man and robs him. I don't know if you guys saw it. It went viral on Instagram. He's not covering a homeless man. He's covering a drug addict who needs his next fix. Yeah, you jackass! I woke up to two homeless men fighting in the street. Did you just get in and throw some blows too? <laughs> no, I actually wanted to help one of them because the other guy was winning. <laughs> he was like bashing him up with his guitar. I was like, "This isn't fair." Do you see anything like that in Australia ever? No, nah. no nope. populations of drug addicts living outside. Oh, there's a little bit of it in Sydney. But nothing like that, and definitely not where I'm from. 
Yeah, can you um, put in perspective where what part of Australia you're from? I don't, you know, I don't think a lot of people are probably not familiar with the geography of Australia in general. My perspective yeah. is that you live a little bit more rural Australia. Yeah, rural. yeah, so if you think of Sydney, it's about an hour and a half down from Sydney and then inland probably like an hour off the beach. It's like a town and, uh, called Mittagong is the town where I'm from. <laughs> Why? Why? If you, that's like that's like people who live in California but live in like Fresno. Why? Yeah, if you search, if you search Mittagong, oh, it's an, it's near Wollongong. That's Wollongong is where I moved to 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 get away from uh, the boringness and find some something to do. Yeah, you belong walking around in a pair of shorts and your shirt off <laughs> near the beach. Like that yeah. should be your primary uh, goal. Oh, yeah, that's that's where I'm from. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Oh, oh. I was wondering, like, I did that on accident. No, Caleb hijacked the screen. I see what's, I see what's going on here. Yeah, but I'm not sure what the population is, but it's not not very much. Does but it it's say a small little town. Everyone knows each other. Everyone's slept with each other's girlfriends. <laughs> no, kind of my, kind, my, kind of, my kind of town. <laughs> your sister's your wife. <laughs> Hey, is um to, to put it? How many people does Australia have? Thirty million people. Oh, I'm not sure. I, last I heard, twenty four. Okay. Well, that's a good thing because you know, in in Iceland, they only have three hundred thousand people. Speaking of island nations, and so everyone is is actually really. It's not. It's not only that you everyone has slept with everyone's girlfriend. Everyone slept with everyone's sister, <laughs> mom, dad, cousin, everything. So at least you have enough people to kind of space that shit out a little bit. Twenty five yeah. million. That's it. I know some of you are like, oh, he's so funny. That's so crass. No, it, it, it's neither funny nor crass. It's just just the facts. <laughs> the facts. It's the truth. So you you go to Venice Beach, and I, I'm get, do you think that's where you got COVID? No, nah, I think I got it on the plane. To Vegas. To, to LA from Dubai. Oh, okay. You, you want to know something crazy, Ricky? I, I was in Dubai in 2019. And yeah. I think I got COVID on the plane back from Dubai in 2019. About two oh. hours into it, I started feeling a fever, and I was it was really? an absolutely miserable flight. That was before COVID was even the, Oh, Well, no one had really heard of it, but the previous sanctional was in Chengdu, China. And guys like Tommy Marquez and a couple of athletes, um, Luis Wickstrom, for example, had yeah. competed there and then or covered the media and then traveled to Dubai and I hung out with them, yeah. came home, and I was just like, terribly sick for like five days after getting back actually i haven't really been sick at all since then so i think i might have gotten it real early on yeah you got that natural immunity louise vickstrom does that name deserve to be I, no one knows who the fuck louise vickstrom is do you know who louise vickstrom is ricky <laughs> i saw i'm sorry that brian's mentioning lower tier athletes in your presence like <clears throat> keep, keep it games athletes sir Hi, Brian. I'm Louis. Louis Fixstrom. There's no Louis. I resent. Uh, I resent that response, Uh, uh two. It, it, I I saw uh something a paper from the Department of Defense the other day that they knew that um, SARS was around in 2018 from Project Veritas, and that they released in 2020 that the cure was ivermectin. Did you see those papers, Brian? No, but I'm pretty convinced that at this point you could go online and find. Uh, evidence to support whatever claim you you want to so you i don't dick. i don't uh, spend much more time doing that so you so then you um so you spent you hole up in a hotel room for four days with your girlfriend <clears throat> yeah we're in like is it, uh, is it bad yes yeah, it's, it's fucked i don't even remember it i want to forget about it <laughs> but uh yeah, it was a horrible time we're in a in like a a pretty shitty hotel, or not? I wouldn't even call it a hotel. I call it a motel where cheap people try and live, and they crank music all night, and you can hear people next door and arguments going on out in the car park. Um, that was where we were staying. It wasn't far off the strip. We were just stuck in there for the four days, just like in bed, just feeling like shit. And just hurting, uh, like muscle soreness, bones hurting, like that kind of like deep flu stuff. Yeah, yeah, just deep aches in the in the joints and muscles, and just like my head was going to explode, and I just 
couldn't eat and I couldn't control my temperature. Like I was getting in the hot shower because I was freezing and then I'd start sweating. And then, yeah, just Have you ever been that sick before? No. Nah. I had, and I mentioned that these, that I got sick in 2019, like that two years before that I got the flu and it was equally as bad. And all the things that you were describing where you just want to forget it. And you like, it was like five days of delirium and all this stuff. And, yeah, yeah. But I, th- I think that that's, you know, kind of important to put in context is like people get really sick from the flu and always have, and people die from the flu and always have. And I, this, I, you know, it's not uh, it's not anything that anyone wants to deal with, but it's not also it's not like a unique thing that's just happened to people in the last two years. Like these kind of illnesses have come and gone for people for you know centuries, millennia. Yeah, I never I never get sick. Like it was a shock to me, and just almost this whole trip, I feel I have been sick, and it's not a it's not a good time. How old are you? Twenty-seven. You, you know what it is? It's because you're standing upside down when you're in the United States. <laughs> you're used to standing like this. Now you're on the other side of the earth, and you're like this, and all your yeah. shit like just running down to your head. Yeah, my head hurts it's still right now. I I had the flu once, probably five or six years ago, and it was and it was the craziest sickness I've ever had. It was like what you said, and basically I remember like walking to my bed, and I couldn't even make it, and I laid on the floor in my in my bedroom, <laughs> and just told my wife to cover me with as many blankets as she could, and to just bring me a bucket of water. Yeah. And I and I, I, I seriously was ready to die. My I my bones hurt, but yeah. when it was over, it was over in one second. Mm. Was yours over in one second? Like all of a sudden, I just broke a sweat, and I was like, "Oh my god!" But it was yeah. so bad. It was no, I carried on like I felt better, like I could go on with my day and do things. But it, it wasn't over in a second. The only I'd have some ibuprofen, and I'd like think that I was getting better but it was just the ibuprofen kicking in. I'd be good for like three or four hours and then I'd feel it wearing off and I'd be like, oh shit, give me some more. <laughs> hey, did you ever think that you might die? Were you ever like, or your girlfriend gets scared because there is so much media, you know what I mean? Everyone's dying, bodies in the streets. We were like, oh shit, I'm going to die. Nah, didn't nah. get that in- intense. Oh, how about your girlfriend though? She's a girl. Girls do that. Like they have uh what did someone? I'm gonna get in so much trouble for bringing this up. <laughs> they have estrogen malfunctions. Did, uh, how about girl? Did she think she was gonna she was die? Right. She was fine. She was just worried about me. She was. Yeah. She, so she, she didn't quite get hit as hard as me. She she was sick, but didn't have like the the headaches and the body chills and that. She just just um had the body aches and just like normal fever. Couldn't eat. That's because you games athletes are carbohydrate addicts. <laughs> you got you guys run your bodies ragging and, and beat up on your immune systems, and then you guys live off of you guys just sit around and just suck down sugar all day to be explosive. You guys are like race cars. <laughs> True my, or false? My partner reckons I live off thin air and sunshine. Do you not eat a lot? Uh not compared to some, I don't eat much. Like um, I struggle to eat. During training and before training, but like at nighttime, I ate a lot, a lot of food. Yeah, you are lean. You are lean. How much do you weigh right now? Oh, I don't want to know. But I lost, yeah. 10, I lost ten pounds when I had COVID, and I've and, probably and, lost more now because I've been to the toilet a lot. Yeah, I've been to the toilet four times this morning. But I normally, <laughs> <laughs> I normally weigh two hundred pounds, like 90, 89, 90 kilos. So you think you're below 190 now? Oh, I hope not. No, I think I'm about 86, which is what 187 maybe. No. So you're not a little pinner like Taylor Self, that guy who is at uh, <laughs> in my in Miami. You're a little thicker than him. Yeah, not like that. Yeah, good. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Hey, do you have someone who helps you with your social media? Nah. nah. No. No. You don't have a professional photographer or do you have an agent? Yeah, I work I've probably just gotten with an agent after this weekend. But Oh, uh, really? Before that, I had nothing and no social media help. I have a couple of photographers that have come and shot some stuff now and then, but I don't have anyone that I work with all the time. Do you know Do you know if if 
many Australians have any uh, agents or representation like that? I mean, obviously, Tia, you know, and, and maybe Car are the really, really big ones, but outside of them? Yeah, no, that's all I know of, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not sure. James Newberry has one. I, he was um, yeah. he was selling that product that helps you get rid of lice in your dreadlocks. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he has one, and, and Khan, I'm not too sure, but. Yeah, it's um, definitely something you need. Did hey, you uh, talk? Did you talk to? Uh, was Khan? Um, well, you, you've made the decision to come to the U.S. now to like spend some time here. I uh, wasn't wasn't sure. I kind of come here to try it out and um, see if that's what I wanted to do. But I'm actually flying home today, back to Australia. Oh, we're gonna get to that. That's a complete mistake. I'm gonna try to discourage you to do that. Um, go on, Brian. Did you have a follow up question before we get into that? No, no. I just I know that uh, um, Khan had spent some time out there in Vegas, and so I didn't know if you'd maybe talk to him and and trying to decide if that was something you wanted to do. Yeah, I was I was definitely thinking about it, um, about staying staying longer. But um, yeah, Australia is too good. The life I live back mm-hmm. home and the lifestyle I have and the people around me, it's just like I'm happy with that, and that's what I want to have leading into the season and across the games this year. So I think that's my best place to be for this season. So that's what I'm going to do. Caleb, can you pull up his Instagram? Hey, um, uh, Ricky. W- w- um, so when you fly back, where will you land? Sydney. And then will you have to do 14 is the town you live in, in the same region as Sydney, or will you have to quarantine twice? No, nah, I'm I'm fine. I go straight back in. I'm double vaccinated, so if you're double they just, vaccinated, they they leave you alone. Oh, really? You just land yeah. and you're free. They just open the door of your cage of the plane and you're free. Yeah, I'm out straight straight out of there. Has wow. that changed? Has it's that like changed that. recently? <laughs> because uh, all the athletes that went back from the games still had to go through that quarantine yeah, yeah. process. Yeah, it all changed. Um, <laughs> November, maybe November. Okay, because I just was a a UFC fighter I was talking to had to do 14 days in the city he landed in, and then when he switched to another city, he had to do another 14 days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what um, James Newbury had to do. He he did 14 days in Sydney, and then Adelaide, which is another flight, had their own rules of another 14 days, so he did 28 days. Like, phew, that's, that's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Caleb, will you scroll to the picture of him in front of? He's in front of like a VW bus or a van. It's pretty <laughs> that one. So who took that's that? My, that's my car. That is your car. Yeah. Who took that? Uh, Et is his name. It, Et. And, he's a he's just a local guy, just a local um, videographer. He shoots like models and stuff like that. He's not like he knows a bit about CrossFit, but he's not heavily into it. Yeah, you don't want someone who's heavily into CrossFit to do it. I'm telling you, dude. So someone someone said, hey, whatever's going on with Ricky's Instagram and his social, he has good agents and he has good handlers. And so it's pretty cool to hear you say that you don't because that's just you and you're just yeah. representing yourself uh, really well. I mean, dude, you should get into modeling. That's a crazy photo. <laughs> that is – I mean, that's the dream right there. That's what every That's what every kid in the United States wants to be doing between yeah. the ages of 17 and 25 wants to have a good body he wants to jump in a van and he wants to snowboard or skate or do some shit like that you can see my mountain bike is in there as well you can see yeah the- yeah yeah i didn't see uh, it until you said it yeah yeah i got my, my my towel my helmet and there's a there's a bed in there a fridge that's uh, that's how i live what Ricky. is that what make is that <clears throat> what's that what is that van like what make is oh, it? oh it's a hyundai i load oh do we, we don't even have those in the states huh I have a Hyundai Sonata, but not this kind of cool van. Yeah. Ricky, on a, on a given week or maybe in a, in a month, how much um, activity do you do that's outside the gym? Mountain biking, snowboarding, whatever, the, or just surfing, whatever you guys do. Yeah, a lot. A lot, eh? I, um, like, during the week, it's kind of pretty, pretty tame, just like all CrossFit, lots of training. Um between the home gym and and Benton where I train, and then 
like Thursdays is usually like an active recovery day. So I usually go to the, um, we've got like a, an outdoor 50 meter saltwater pool, like right on the beach. So I go there awesome. and do, do laps, do my laps there. And then that only takes me like an hour. And then I've got the whole day to, to do whatever else I want. I'm not spending four hours in the gym. So usually I take the dog for, for a skate along the boardwalk and take him for a swim and then I'll go up into the mountains and get on my mountain bike and just pedal for a few hours and and ride down the hills. And then, so it uh, is a good ass life. Yeah, it's awesome. And you got your brother there. <laughs> yeah. Any other siblings besides Benny? Yeah, I got two sisters. And are, are do you see them a bunch too? You still see Benny a bunch, right? He's in your town. Yeah. Yeah, I I've been living with him the last year. Oh, that's live, awesome. Live with him and his and his wife. And um yeah, we set up set up a place in Wollongong with a home gym and it's not far from the beach and we've got a yard there for the dog and all our mountain bikes and surfboards and just uh, yeah, it's a good good life. But yeah, my sisters um they're older than me, they're both into CrossFit as well. They just they do it just for health. There you go, Jeff. Hey. Jeff Evans. Uh, so um, who's pushing you these days? Are you training with Benny? Who's your guy? Who's your like, okay, let's get in there. I need someone to push me. Do you have one of those? And is it Benny? Yeah. Benny's not really pushing me like in the workouts, like side by side. Um, but he's, he's mainly the one that's like in my ear barking at me during the workouts and G, G me up for the, for the lifts and the strength and all that. But um, pretty much just training with the training with the members of the gym. We have got a couple of athletes there that are striving to do well, and uh, they're super motivated. They literally don't miss anything on the program. They're there every day at the same time, and I just um, yeah, pretty much just been been training at the gym on the side while the, the class is happening, and we're all just kind of out the back there, just cheering each other up and having a good time. Are you self motivated? Yeah. yeah. And do you know what drives that? Like, um, are you trying to prove something to your dad, to your mom, to God? Do you or do you like discomfort? Like, do you know what drive what's driving no, you? That's what the. I just, for one, I just enjoy working out. I just love pushing myself. I love the endorphins you get from training, and like. Also, I'm good at it, and if you're good at something, it's always enjoyable, you know. Um, but yeah, I um, I've always believed that I uh, I can be one of the best in this sport, so that's why I've never given up, and that's why I'm still here today to to prove prove that point. Why do you think that? Just from yeah, like. How I how I train, the results I'm getting in training, my comparisons to the, to the other good top guys and their times and and the weights and and um. Yeah. Are you disciplined? Yeah, I'm fairly disciplined. Not probably not as disciplined as as some, but um, that just it's not really my style. I like to have a lot of variety and not be too much of a robot and just kind of enjoy the journey as well as, as um, try and do well. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's definitely not, not only one way to do it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. some people, maybe, maybe they read the Matt Fraser retiring article and they're like, man, I have to be locked in on every detail of my life from here to here to here to get there. Then yeah. you see a guy like uh, Pat Vellner, who I think at this point is, maybe the third or fourth best in terms of his career accomplishments. And he's, you know, pursued a career and a relationship and a kid, and he has fun with his friends and does all this other stuff. He has got a totally different balance and still achieves yeah. that. And I hear a guy like you, who's, you know, you're out in the outback there doing your thing with your buddies, you're training hard, but you have some balance in your life. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Yeah, I sure. do. I think there's something horribly wrong with it. Hey, did you, did you, we'll get back to that in a second. I don't believe you. I, I don't, I don't, I think that you're, you don't believe us. Come yeah. On. I don't believe either of you. Well, we'll get into it in a second. Uh, I mean, cause I hang my hat up every day on like, 
I, there, I think that all these people, these guys who are at this level that Ricky's at are like, there's something in them like, I will outwork everyone. I will be more disciplined than everyone. I Like, someone else is quitting. I am not fucking quitting. I am not going to take today off from the podcast. I am because just because I worked fucking eight hours a day. I'm going to get wake up and I'm going to see Ricky this morning. Like, there's like you're not getting to the top of the mountain unless you unless you like I'm have a little bit of like, fuck you in, a, in there. I don't think he's saying that he's that he doesn't work hard, but he's I, just smoking know. hash from morning to night. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that he's working hard. He's heard on his active recovery days, he swims, he skates, he bikes. On his yeah. other days, he's four days in the gym. He's got a great group of guys that are pushing him all the time. Probably they're giving him messages right now saying, Hey, man, you're traveling around the world getting sick. We're over here beating your ass when you get back. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need to get back there and get back to what I was doing. Did you see Matt? Did you and Matt and um, or you and um, Pat? So this this Palooza was the first time you were in a space with them since 2017, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, did you run into either of them? I ran into Matt, but I didn't run into to Velna. At um, all. And and how and how was that with Matt? Because he was yeah, he's was, been he's been quite vocal yeah, about, about was, you. It was actually alright. It was surprisingly pretty nice to me. Uh, we just I was walking into the hotel to go and check in and register for the event and um he was walking out with the buttery bros and i kind of said good day to them and then turned around and he was there and he um said good day and how's the uh, how's the flight and how long you been here and told him all that and told him i was in vegas and it was cold and he said oh cold you should try and come live where i am it's colder and then kind of that was kind of it and he kind of on the go and he went that way and I went that way and that was it. And Ricky, in your life, have you spent uh, any significant amount of time in snow or a snowy environment? Oh, like I, I go to the snow. I've been in the snow every year since I was like four years old. Like my parents take me up to the mountains like once a year for like three days and um, just like a family, family holiday every year. But um I never spent like weeks in a cold in- environment like that. Are you glad you got that out of the way? Like when you saw Matt, were you like, okay, like obviously, like if I was going to that event, there's so many people there that I talk shit about that I would want mm. to like, I would either not want to see them in fucking at all, yeah. or I'd want to see them right away and just be like, you know what I mean? Just get through yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the weird. Was it like, oh, good, check that off the list. Okay, yeah. that, I don't have to think about that anymore. Yeah, I mean, was, I'm sure he felt the same way. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like that. I just wanted to see him all and just get it out of the way before the competition started and just, like, whatever happened, happened and just move on. Um, yeah, it was, it was a, bit of, a bit of a relief. Would you – how would you have done in this – if you were fresh, how would you have done in this competition? Would you have, would you have beat Pat? Whoop his ass. Send him back to fucking Canada with the twenty five thousand. <laughs> that dude t- took a hundred grand. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <sighs> uh, I think I think ha- me being healthy. If I had turned up like I did um, before Dubai, I was I was very healthy and just left Australia and preparation was was awesome. Everything was feeling good. I think I would have done really well. Definitely, definitely top two. Um, you know, I, t- I talked to Pat um, a-, a bit, and and I like Pat. And there's this sentiment out there that hey, um, Ricky shouldn't be getting this attention. This is lame. Blah blah blah. And and they're forgetting, they're forgetting that life is all about a story. Like yeah. like, how much cooler is it when you watch the sunset, knowing that um, the Earth is going around the sun and that the Earth spins? To, you know, like mm-hmm. e- everything you can add to to the depth of the story that the Earth spins one rotation every twenty four hours, that it's circling the sun, that there's trillions of other stars. When you don't know that, the story is so less fulfilling. It's like yeah. people are like, "Dude, this is a great fucking story here." Mm-hmm. It, it, it it may not be ideal for you. You may not be proud of it, Pat, but. But it's a but for the fans, it's a great um, it's a great story, and all of these things exist because people care. It's like this podcast. If people didn't watch it, I wouldn't fucking do it. I'm not like, wow, this is really my creative outlet, and I really need to express myself. I would do it if I was the only person on earth. No bullshit. 
<laughs> if there were no people watching the CrossFit Games, you would be outside fucking hunting food and bringing it home to your chick. Well, you'd yeah. have a harem, not yeah, sure. fucking in a stadium in Florida. Right? <laughs> I mean. It's true. Yeah. Is, 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 it, is, it, is, it, is it, um, has it been stressful for you the last four years? Like, are you every day? Do you wait? Like, when you go into situations like this, are you like, God, what did I do to myself by fighting again? This method? Or are you like, okay, are you like, I, 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 are you just embraced it? Like, this is, this is, yeah. this is my role. I'm just riding this one out. Yeah, no, I, I pretty much embraced it. Like, the first, the first year was, was, was tough. Like, just accepting it all and coming to realization with what was going on and what um, situation I'd put myself in. Um, but, Pretty much like it, it, CrossFit saves me as well as it kind of buried me, if you know what I mean. Like I had to still get to the gym and, and work out because it just made me feel better. And um, that's what what kept me going. And at one point I thought like maybe I'm meant to go back and pursue my dream of, of playing professional professional rugby. That was my dream as a kid and – I tried to go back down that path, and I, I moved. I moved states to um, go on a train and trial contract for a semi-professional team, and um, that didn't go to plan because obviously the the band carried over. But I full full on moved. Moved. Wait states. a second. The band carried over. Yeah, yeah, it did. So I um I was with this team um up in queensland if you're from australia it's the the cappers is the is the name they're a feeder club to the, the penrith panthers which is a professional team in australia and um yeah i did um pre-season there and the trial games and i was like fully involved with the team and felt like oh cool i'm gonna be able to relive my childhood dream and give this thing a go but then um the club was in contact with Asada um, over there and back and forth, emails, whatnot. And then it turned out that the um, organisation organization over there recognised um, other drug organisations that uh, follow the same protocols and procedures as WADA. So they're going to carry over the, the sanction and what I did into their rules and they said, you can't participate here for four years either. Okay, assholes, that make you happy? Yeah. So. Make you happy? Was there any time during that four years where it was, like, really difficult or you thought about just giving it all up, like all of it, the, the cross with the rugby? Nah, nah, not. was never going to throw it in because I was, um, like, working some – trade jobs and concreting and doing some carpentry and stuff. And I was like, this isn't, this isn't the life for me. Like if I don't make something out of this, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. So after the rugby thing fell through, I was like, all right, cross what it is. I'm just going to wait it out. And if I'm going to come back in rugby or CrossFit in 2021, 20, 22, I'm going to be more likely to be at the top of the sport in CrossFit than rugby. So. Had you ever thought about uh, uh, mountain biking? Or like, are you good enough at that? Did you, or were you ever good enough at that? Yeah, not quite. I didn't quite do it long enough as a kid to be that good at it. Um, but I did think about it at one point because there was like one part of the event that I was really good at, which is called in, like enduro which is kind of up and down, pedaling, going downhill. And I got into, did a few competitions of that and did pretty well, but I don't know, it was just, uh, it was just a bit too like, how do you, where's the direction of this sport? Like, where do you go? Where do you compete? Like CrossFit it's less, rugby. It's, yeah. It's less defined than the others. Yeah. The others, it's like clear, like this is where you got to go. This is where you got to compete. You got to come this. And it's just more, but obviously, competing is in your pedigree. Like you are, you are made to compete. You want to be out there, yeah. trying, you know, testing yourself against other guys. Yeah, for sure. That's competing is where where I shine, and that's what I love to do. 
He took his girlfriend away from three other dudes. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, by the way, I relate to you very much on um, like after you leave CrossFit, uh, you get kicked out of CrossFit. Uh, it's, it's sort of your healing too. You know, I was fired from there and uh, you know, Ooh. part of me wants to um, in one hand, I have a flamethrower and I want to burn the whole fucking place down. And the other hand, I, you know, want to embrace it and hug it and kiss it. I don't yeah. think maybe I've made it as far as long as you on the journey. I'm still occasionally burning this motherfucker <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, but, but I also embrace it. Uh, yeah. with the other hand. Yes. Everyone's got, everyone's got those two voices on their shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so, so you, so, so, uh, did the Buttery Bros interview you? Did they film your interaction with uh, Fraser? No, they didn't. Not at that point. Uh, oh, those in. pussies! Are they documentarians or what? Yeah, no, right. <laughs> could have been the best. Could have been the best part of the the film. <laughs> yes, yes, they've already they already milked the fuck out of you once. Why not go for a second round? <laughs> <laughs> I bumped into them briefly uh, somewhere in the arena, and they asked if they could interview me, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah go for it." Hey, you've been to Wadapalooza before, haven't you? Yeah, 2015 as a little little spring chicken. So this is seven seven years later. Yeah, six, six seven years later. Is it is it uh, quite a bit different than you remember? Yeah, it was similar. Just times ten. Just <laughs> yeah. same, very similar setup. Just the flagger stage was a bit bigger. The bayside was pretty similar. Just a bigger grandstand and just a lot more people. Uh, Hamilton Blair, are those dreadlocks? I'd love to hear him speak about the percentage of top tier athletes that use PEDs in CrossFit. Do you, do you have an opinion on that? Uh, I hope to say no one. Yeah. Do you, do you really say that? Or because I think it's no one too. Like, and people yeah. be like, dude, 10 people tested positive here. I just know because I've been around it fucking forever and I just don't see people doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there is. Like, we all work very hard. We're very motivated, disciplined machines that just love CrossFit, and we spend hours in the gym, and we look like the way we are because of the the way we train and the amount of hours we spend in the gym and the food that we eat. Um, when you did that interview with Chase, why did you do that? And and was that weird? Like, I don't know who I felt. Um more bad's not the right word i don't feel bad for anyone but i'm just like it wasn't a conversation it was just like an interrogate like he was just going through all like i mean he was good i mean he went through all the checkpoints but i'm like why is ricky do like why why did you do that was just like just was that just like taking one giant shit for you like okay let's just get this fucking over with. <laughs> pretty much pretty much this is what it felt like <laughs> yeah it was, it was intense like I was very nervous. I had a week's notice and kind of was told what was going to be going to be asked, and I, I knew everything that was going to come at me, and just had to um, yeah, face it and tell my truth and story, and yeah, it was pretty intense. But did you feel free afterwards, or did you feel dirty? I felt free. Yeah, you felt did. Good. Oh, yeah. Felt, felt good. Felt lighter. I was That's like, why you laughed that. when you asked him about the big shit. <laughs> Everyone knows that feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew I had to do it sooner or later, and it was just yeah, it was good to get it out of the way. And I think it was. Um, I think transparency is one of the best things, just for the world, for healing in general. And I think it was cool that, um, you know, in in the past when there were people who did things that quote unquote didn't fit the the narrative um, like a Ronnie Teasdale or a, uh, um, a uh, Ryan Fisher or um, CrossFit always kind of like shun them. Mm. Don't give them any attention. And this Dave made the decision to go the opposite way, which I, which I totally am on board with to embrace it. This is us mm. embrace it, bring the guy on. Then he kept promoting you on his Instagram. And mm. uh, did, do you, do you have a relationship with him? I mean, now he's dead now, but I mean, before he died. <laughs> no, nah, not, not really. Eh? Like, I haven't never really spoke to him like on Instagram or like a personal, personal chat, but everything I've had to do with him, it's always been 
I've always respected him and we've always seemed to have gotten on well and he's always kind of seen something in me and he's always been nice to me but I haven't um, I only interacted with him at the games in 2017 and and that was it really was it surprising to you that that he's been reposting your stuff over the last several months yeah it was a little bit but I think he was just trying to get a bit of hype bit of hype going bit of retaliation bit of um, exposure more people wanted to see what what it's all about he also, I mean, um, Dave understands hardship. I mean, he mm. ha- he hasn't had a he, he hasn't had an easy life. Yeah. So I think he he yeah. yeah a, a, and, and like someone said in the comments here, everyone loves the the comeback story or the guy you know mm. who 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 digs himself out of a hole. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, he respected what I'd been through and that I'd done my time, and he um, yeah was probably happy to see me come back and. And um, everyone probably thought I wasn't going to come back, so he was getting behind that I was, and he was um, yeah, proud of me, proud of me for doing it. I, I hope it's it's crazy how much you're putting on the line now. It would be so easy to okay, you took your ban, just run your gym, stay in your little hole, get your girlfriend pregnant, and just kind of stay <laughs> hidden, right? Instead, yeah. instead you come back and you compete. Hope I'm not going to throw up. You come back and you compete so that the whole fucking world can judge you. So that the 50% of the people who've been talking shit about you can hope that you fail and flop. And the other 50%, I mean, like, do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you're setting yourself up to make the haters happy. And yet, and then you yeah. just keep pushing through. I mean, or unless you just don't think like that. Yeah. I don't really think like that, to be honest. Like, okay. Then ignore what I said. Don't listen to me. I'm bad for you. I just focus on me and my life and what I want to achieve. And I don't know the comments and everything has never, never gotten to me ever. Like people seem so worried about, Oh, don't look at the comments and like, don't get distracted and hope you're all right. And like, it doesn't get to me. Like, I don't, I don't care. I just see them as little ants that cross the footpath and you just walk over the top. Like I'm focused on one thing and, I enjoy doing it and this is my life. So I'm just going to continue on with that. Um, I did, did. So the, 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 when you did the interview with chase, um, you were talking about this stuff called rad One Forty, And while you were talking about it, um, I immediately looked it up and tried to buy a bottle cause I wanted to take some and I'm just like, <laughs> Oh fuck it. I'll, and I'm like, th- man, this is so weird. This is supposed to be like some negative shit about it. But all of a sudden I'm like, yeah. and then I, and I put it in the shopping cart and I was going to buy it. It was like $140 for the bottle. And then as yeah. I'm checking out, there's like this warning. It says this shit will enlarge your prostate. Oh, wow. And I'm 49. I can't. And I already had a dude stick his finger in my ass and tell me my prostate's like shaped a little weird. I mean, a medical professional. Well, he said he was a medical professional. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did did um and then and then and then lately I've been so I didn't get it. Yeah, I, no. I didn't get stuff. But lately I've been hearing that hey, like it. you guys are yeah. fucking out of your mind. That do shit anything. doesn't even say that again. I said don't buy it. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Is is that true? So lately I've been reading, I've read that in a few places, like, hey, you guys are fucking idiots. That stuff didn't even fucking help them. Yeah. It's it's stupid. It should, it doesn't do anything. I so didn't it's notice. just another bullshit supplement. I didn't notice anything on it or anything off it. Crazy. And someone told you that that was okay to take. Yeah. And then you also took it and you went to regionals and you passed the drug test. Yeah. So you're like, good to go. Yeah, he said that. ants. I know. I love. I like. I actually like that too. I, I, I. When he said he steps across them on the footpath like ants, he doesn't even squish them. He steps over them like a kind soul. I really, <laughs> I enjoyed that too. Actually, quite a bit. Ricky, during the last four years, at some point, it seemed like you you decided uh, <clears throat> that you were gonna like participate in the competitions, the biggest competitions of the year in your own gym. You were gonna try your best to replicate the for a setup, do the workout, sometimes even at the same times as watching the mm. the guys that you want to eventually compete with again. How did yeah. that come about? Was that a conversation with some friends or was that an idea that you had? Yeah, and and say, were you uh, doing it before you started telling the world that you were doing it? Uh, no, not really. I kind of always told the world I was doing it. Um, it was just a, an idea between me and my brother. 
we just thought what what's a better way to to see where you're at than than verse them on the TV or online and it was just like a, a way to keep me motivated and prove that I belong up the top and that I can mix it with those guys and that's just um, yeah the way it went. Before before doing something like that, would you like taper off your training a little bit to get ready for a weekend of an, you know intense events, or was it just like a, a part of your training? No, nah, it's just part of training. It's just like oh, let's give it a go and turn it on the TV, and this is what we're going to do, and then just start the clock and send it. Uh, this guy Crumb Dad he says it absolutely does work, but you have to get it from a pharmacy, not the internet. I can't go to a pharmacy. <laughs> I just want to order that shit. I but, mean, um, crumb, crumb Daddy. I know. This is who we're getting. We're, is this a reliable source? No, no. <laughs> most the uh, most the time during the during the four years I was working during the day, so most of my training was in the afternoon with the with the class, and or I'd finish work early to come and do like the online qualifier workouts and verse them on the TV or whatever before the before the classes. Came rolling in. Did you? Oh, that's not the stuff that I saw. The stuff that I was going to buy was yellow pills in a clear bottle. <laughs> yeah, and it's cheap. And the stuff I was going to buy was like 140 bucks. It's crazy that you can. The internet's an amazing place. 115 five star reviews. Um, Ricky, when you grew up, are, are all your brothers and sisters um, blood related? Yeah. Like, yeah. The same mom and same dad? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're and all, where where really are close. you in the pack? I'm the youngest. You are. Yeah, I'm one of four, and I'm the youngest. And and what's your dad do for a living? My dad is a school teacher. Oh no shit! And so is my mom. Oh wow! What do they teach? Yeah. What grade? Uh, my mom teaches primary school, so she's she teaches K to six. And then my dad teaches like um, behavior disorder, so all all the kids that get kicked out of school go to his school. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah, those are called I think continuation schools in California. Mm. Did you ever go to one of those? No, nah, no. Nah. Was... Nah, but... He must be a pretty patient man. <laughs> yeah, he's very patient. Like one of the most patient people you've met. Yeah, that shit is rough. And what was it? What was it like growing up? So, so if your parents were um, teachers, you guys didn't have a lot of money. Like you shared a bedroom with Benny, yeah. and yeah, yeah, bunk bed, Benny, yeah. And and, and you got me and you guys all... in one room, and my two sisters in the other room, and just had like a a house that came on a truck and lived on five acres in the land. Just had some cows and horses and. Had a creek that ran through, and we just had heaps of dogs, and just used to run around, do whatever we want. You're a country boy. Yeah. Do you do you guys wear shoes when you're growing up, or take them uh, or leave them? If we we're going over the fence in the back paddock, we'd throw some shoes on. <laughs> uh, he doesn't um, need toast. He doesn't need toe spacers. He he played outside <laughs> barefoot as a kid. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Uh, you, I know that life. That's the, um, and, and I bet you Colton Mertens knows that life. Uh, that's the Georgia life in the United States. You said your home came on the back of a truck. <laughs> so, so you lived in like a, like a, what we call here in the States. I think it's called like a double wide. Yeah. It came on two trucks and it got connected and they put it all together. And then my dad built like a big deck, like a veranda all the way around it. And then um, he just kind of expanded off it. He put a pool in and a spa and like a little, another little barn house off the side of it for us teenagers to live in when we grew up. And, and does he still, um, yeah, is it like that? Yeah, pretty similar. Yeah, that second one. And does he, um, yeah. does he still live there? Yeah, he still lives there. Yeah, my older sister lives there now too. And and you've moved from the when I say you moved from there, you're like an out. You're closer to the water now. You said you're about an hour closer to the water, or no? Yeah, yeah, I'm on the water now in Wollongong. And do you see him? Do you see your family very often? And what's that like? Yeah, yeah, I see him a lot because the gym, the gym's located where where they live. So where I live on the beach, 
is like 40 minutes from the gym. So I'm, I'm up there most days and then I'll, I'll pop into mum and dad's place and say good day and hang out for a bit. Sometimes I'll stay the night if I don't feel like driving home. Um, yeah, Are you allowed to have your girlfriend stay the night too? Ah, uh, she's not allowed. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you never yeah. know. Yeah, she's good. Uh, so what do you do? So that's a lot. You commute and, and you commute every day in that van. Like when you drive, that's your your day driver too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do, What do you listen to on this commute? Uh, just the radio, eh? usually. You're not tuned into the Sevon podcast. Oh, and yeah, the Sevon <laughs> podcast. Yeah. All right, just checking. Just making sure. <laughs> Who are Ricky's favorite CrossFitters? Would he like to pick the brain of any of the men or women? Aaron Patnode. Thanks, Aaron. It, is there anyone like like T is in your town? Like, is any party like yeah, that'd be cool to spend a week with her or or, or not your town, but your country, your island, or Kara? Or do you have any desire like to be like oh, so all those people go to Mayhem? I wonder if it would be cool to just go to Cookville for a week. Yeah, uh, if there's someone I look up to in in CrossFit, it's definitely Rich Rich Franick. He um was one of the reasons we got into the sport um, when me and my brother started. We used to just watch videos of him and and um, try and copy what he was doing. Um, but the, the other athletes, like not like, I'm more inspired by by bigger celebrities and sporting stars. Um, but in terms of CrossFit, mainly rich, rich Franny. And, and, and what do you mean, like you're inspired by other other like like people out of like basketball, football, rugby? Yeah, rugby, UFC, uh, even like actors. <laughs> Savan just got a half mask. Yeah. How did you get into – so you have a picture <laughs> with Ninganu. Yeah, yeah. How did you get into the right. PI? For those of you who don't know, uh, Ricky was in Vegas. He he trains with uh, – Justin Kotler's your coach? Yeah, yeah. Is he yeah. still your coach even though you're coming back to Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, that's the home of I think Bethany Shadburn and uh, Daniel Brandon and Delugos and Kara yeah. Pierce was there. Um, uh, are you so so you were there? How did you end up going into the PI? What were you doing there? That's um, UFC's headquarters. That's what uh, they call their Performance Institute. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Bethany sees a lady there for for body work, like treatment. Uh, I think you just call them PTs over here, physical therapists. Yep. So, um, yeah. What do you call them in them. Australia? Physios, physios, chiros, osteos. <laughs> so, PTs, so PTs in Australia is personal trainer. Ah. Uh, so, so she says, "Hey, do you want to see my dude over there, my chick over there?" You're like, "Yeah." So you go over there, and she starts yeah. like pushing on your body and like, yeah, like yeah, just yeah. taking kinks out and stuff. Yeah, that's. So I went, yeah, I went there and cost a lot of money, but it was definitely worth it. The treatment was awesome, and I kept asking her. I was like, "Is, is Francis here?" Like, I know oh wait, he's... you did? You're like, isn't that weird? Shouldn't you just be like minding your own business? Or you're like <laughs> that much of a fan too? Yeah, yeah I love him. He's, he's you never know; it might be the only mind. time they end up in the same building or something like that. You got to take the chance. Yeah, she said it, like all the athletes are going through there all the time. Like there's always people floating floating around. But she said Francis lives in Vegas, so he's always there. And um, the first two times I was there, she's like, oh, he's here somewhere. And I was like, oh, I'd love to meet him. And then the third time I was there, he, he popped his head into the to the room and seen what was going on. And, um, I think um, I think he wanted to know who my girlfriend was because she was sitting there, <laughs> sitting there what, watching <laughs> what I was doing. And then he'd come in and ask what was going on, and I was like, "Holy shit! I got to get off the table and ask for a photo." And the lady let me up, and then shook his hand, and my hand just got <laughs> swallowed. And then yeah, got a photo, and that was about it. Um, Caleb, can we look at his uh, Instagram? Real quick. Yeah, this is a crazy picture. Uh, just so those of you guys don't know, this guy is also fighting this weekend and probably is got to be top top one or two uh, biggest heavyweight fights in UFC history. Yeah, it's so, it was on my story. Oh, I'm what? Gonna, I'm going to post it um, when he fights and wish him luck. <laughs> Do, oh, good. Do you have a scroll down a little bit, though? Sorry, Caleb, a little bit more. 
I just want to see one thing. Let me let me look through those for a second. There's another picture I'm looking for. Let's see. Keep going. Oh yeah, yeah, right there. The one uh, is that your girlfriend right there, leaning over? Is yeah. Right there? Yeah, that's her. Yeah, he was staring at your girlfriend. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> double check that. Make sure you had that right. All right. Um, and then so did you do any training in there? Nah, no training. They walked me around the place. It was, it was awesome. Uh, Ice baths, hot tubs, cryotherapy, saunas, had all their food there, like like a, a kitchen bar with all smoothies and all their supplements. And, and then upstairs was like a full training area. They had an octagon with like a little stadium around it. And then downstairs was like all the strength conditioning, all the weights and uh, machines and all that. Do you think that that's something that uh, Kotler has a vision of creating eventually for, you know, CrossFitters? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I I was talking to him about it and said, like, the UFC said it was amazing, like, and he's kind of said, like, that's kind of a small version of what he's envisioning. A small version? In Vegas. Um, did you meet Bethany Shadburn's, um, uh, that guy Moses she works with? Uh, no. Black dude. He does, he, he, I, she made this post. Or she's doing all this stuff with her body. Yeah, yeah. You didn't meet that guy? I want to have that guy on the podcast. That stuff she does yeah. is pretty crazy. Do you do any of that stuff? Not, not her partner, is it? I, no, I, no, I don't think so. This guy's name is Moses something or other. I reached out to him on Instagram. I want to have him on the show. Yeah. You didn't meet that guy? No, I didn't meet him. Did you see him? Do you know what I'm referencing? That stuff she does where she basically yeah. tries to articulate her joints through all of their like for, for this yeah, range yeah, of motion. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty crazy stuff. It, it yeah. looks like it takes incredible patience and focus beyond what I have. Yes, I don't think I have the patience for that stuff. But you dish. Say it again. Each to their own. Yes. Um, you destroyed the pack. Uh, oh, is that him? Let me see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I reached out to this guy. Yeah, I can't wait to have him. This is, yeah, no. You haven't worked out with that guy. No. no. Um. Looks like a smart dude. Yeah, with that collared shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and in front of a whiteboard. Um, You destroyed the pack in the bike event at the games that year. Yeah. Like it wasn't even like – it was like weird. <laughs> like, like no one else had been on a bike before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where were they? I was turned around and I was like, oh, no one's there. Um, does that mean biking's not a good event for the CrossFit Games? Because do you think it's a good event for the CrossFit Games? Yeah, I think it's great. Like, and, and, and it, <laughs> not for you. I mean, as a yeah. test of fitness, like, does it belong in there as part of the test of fitness? Yeah, probably a uh, better question for Brian. He might have a better opinion. Brian? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, when I hear, listen, when I asked Ricky about the biking, and he said, "You know, I was pretty good at it, but maybe not as good as I would need to be, or didn't have as much time invested in it." I, you know, but he has enough time invested in it to be amongst the best of the CrossFitters. But that's true for so many things, you know. But I mean, but but even better than he was better than the best of the CrossFitters. Yeah, but he the same like, things happen with swimming. You know, you okay. see Yonikowski; he doesn't even have to try. He wins a swim event by three minutes. You see, mm. you know, guys that are. Like, you know, Fraser rarely ever trained his Olympic lifts and he could still, you know, snatch 300 pounds when competition came because he had a decade of experience doing that. Or people or that have sprinters. high volume spring ring muscle ups. Yeah. Or Guimayeros. I know, you know, he's just faster than everyone else. He got the fast switch muscle fiber. He ran a lot growing up. Yeah. Those types of things. Like it's everyone has their little things that they excel in. And that's your opportunity to make the points. But yeah. just because one guy's way better than everyone else or one woman's way better than the rest of the field doesn't mean that it's not. Uh, a good test. Um, Sevan can grow a beard in a week. Uh, yes, I am actually. This is. I was completely clean shaved four days ago, and I am also. I am gonna. I'm gonna try to grow a beard. I. I, I don't know if I can do it. Do you ever grow? Do you ever grow anything bigger than that, Ricky? And what you got? Uh, that's about it, mate. That's about all I got. And then, and then you cut it off. And it just turns to pubes. <laughs> right. That, yes, mine too. My, that's the problem with mine. Mine looks like someone shaved their crotch and then took some glue and just went. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. gross. Yeah, it's uh, what gross. <laughs> What time is your flight today? Uh, five fifty p.m. Okay. 
And is that a hotel room or an apartment you're in? Uh, it's an Airbnb. Okay, yeah. so you vacate there, and then wh- and you go to Australia, and when do you come back to the states? You wait till the games. Yeah, I'll be waiting till the games. Yeah, yeah. So you do the so semifinals, not, not probably July. I mean, who knows? They might not even be able to pull the games off without Dave. Yeah, that shit just might just just fall apart. Hopefully not. What, Brian? You don't think that you don't you don't think so? <laughs> think the show goes on? I do. Has to. Oh, I don't know if it has to. Ricky, was uh, had you ever um it better met met Roman Krennikov before you were in Dubai? No, no, I don't. Is it? I haven't yeah. seen him in a few years, but uh, he's a yeah. pretty he's a pretty unique specimen, I think, in the CrossFit yeah. space. Was it fun competing with him? Yeah, it was awesome. He's he's a big dude. He's he was impressive in Dubai. <laughs> um, he, he did really well. Uh, As a uh, you know, obviously he's. Um, for you know, different reasons, has also not been able to compete live in the CrossFit Games for the last mm-hmm. four or five years. That he's been probably, you know, definitely good enough to. As a, a high-level competitor, are you hopeful that he'll be able to get over there eventually? And I mean, do you want to go against the best? Uh, you can stay in Russia. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> he's that good, huh? <laughs> nah, it'd be good to have him there. He deserves it. Yeah. Hey, when you did that, when you did that run, so did you see what happened to the girls, the the ladies that went after you? The they they made it in that first event. I think when they made a turn too early and they shortened yeah. their yeah, race. Girls, yeah. Um, and, and did they and they went before you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you went up, had they had they fixed that so that that yeah, error fixed, couldn't happen? Yeah, they fixed it. Yeah. Yeah, like that's where the race started. Like I, I can't believe they turned the girls around there. Like from there on, it was just like straight up for like a hundred meters, and like that's where people were picking each other off, and that's where I gapped everyone and got ahead. Um, did you pay for that the rest of the week? Was that a smart move? I mean, you destroyed the pack. You oh, came down and we're like, "Where is everybody?" Yeah, no, I was fine. I, you were fine. Yeah, I wasn't sore at all. Was that was it uh, was it difficult footing, uncomfortable running in the snow? Is that something you have experience with? Were you running on sands, comparable, anything like yeah. that? Up 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 the top where it was like compact, it was it was pretty fine. But down the bottom where it was real soft and slushy, it was kind of like running in in real like loose sand. Um, but I, I I had a good choice of shoes, which I think helps me a lot. I think a lot of the boys were complaining about their shoes. When you when you went to Miami, and you said you that's where you met your agent. You picked up your agent. Yeah. Was yeah. it? Was oh, that... I met I met him in Dubai, but we got chatting here in Miami. And, and was that the point? Was that the thought? Like, hey, you met after you met him in Dubai. You're like, hey, I'm going to Miami. Let's meet again. Yeah, I didn't even think like this is who I want to work with. He just reached out to me, and he was interested and wanted to set up a chat. So. I was like, yeah, let's let's can, do it. Can you tell us who it is? Yeah, Snor- Snorri. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And, and and what about him did you like that made it like, why go with him? Why not with um, uh, uh, O'Keefe or Cooper or these other guys who are out there? Why go, or uh, uh, I, I saw Jared has is an agent too. Jer- that guy I had on the podcast. I didn't know that. <clears throat> the Zelos games guy is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah he just... I got on with him really well in Dubai, like just from the from the get go, it was easy to get on with, easy to talk to. He's, he seemed super passionate about the sport and he and his athletes and um and like I'd kind of get on with Sarah pretty good. I was talking with her over in Dubai and she has great things to say about him and um yeah, it was just something I was willing to have a chat to him about and get to know more we literally sat at the cafe down here in miami for like three hours three and a half hours having a chat getting to know each other oh let's end the podcast while brian's gone <laughs> is Sevon dancing around trying to get him to be comfortable first or has he already asked him asked him what if he's gay or straight what, what am i supposed to ask him he has a girlfriend i know he's straight i think he's straight are you gay or straight ricky <laughs> Uh, still figuring it out. I understand. I understand. Me too. <laughs> All 
Uh, Brian, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to let Ricky go. I don't want to use all my questions because I'm going to have him on again. Will you come on again, Ricky? Yeah, for sure. Was, it, was this easy? Yeah, easy. Easy peasy. All right, good. That was, uh, yeah, that was super enjoyable. I, apparently, I was supposed to check out of my hotel room 50 minutes ago, so probably good. <laughs> I want. I told <laughs> him when you got up, I go, let's end the podcast. So when Brian comes back, we're gone. Yeah. I can still hear you. Check out of here, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Caleb. Uh, thank you, Caleb. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Ricky Garrard, thank you. Brian Friend, thank you. Uh, uh, what a great weekend. Good to have you on. Um, we will do it again, I, I think, very soon. That was easy. That was fun. It'd be yeah. cool to have you and your brother on at the same time. Um, I've had yeah, some great interactions with your brother at the CrossFit Games. He's funny as shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, cool. uh, all right. Uh, Thanks, man.